What is God? Everyone in the world and every religion in the world sees God in a different way. They all see it according to the way they've been taught, the way they believe. That doesn't mean there's any right, there isn't any wrong. It's just that our concept is so limited to what it really is. God is so huge, it is so big, that there's no way we can define it, and there's no way we can enclose it in a box that we call religion. We call it the source. God is a name that we have put on it, but it all goes back to the source. The source is the beginning of everything. The first thing you have to get over is thinking that God is a man. We personify him. He is not. If anything, he would have been a woman because woman is the, uh, the feminine aspect, the creative aspect. But the truth is, it's not a physical. It is not a man or it is not a woman. It is a huge, powerful energy source that cannot be described. It is the embodiment of love. It is total love. When I've done my sessions, people go back to the source. They go back to where they began, and they said the love is beyond description. They don't want to leave once they are back there. It is so incredible. But all of us started with the source. Everything there is came from it, and it cannot exist without it. It is the glue that holds everything together. If it were to wink out for a fraction of a second, everything would disintegrate. It cannot exist without this power that holds everything together. It all started there. We were all a part of it in the very beginning. And in the very beginning, God, it's, it's been described as a huge bright light, a huge energy source that everything emanates out from. But what I've found in my work is that in the beginning, God was just this huge energy source pulsing out there in space, if you want to limit him by saying space. But then he became curious. He wanted to know. He wanted to learn. He wanted to experience. He couldn't do it on his own. So he exploded out. And when he exploded out, you may call this the Big Bang Theory. But when he exploded out, all the particles flew out in all different directions. Those particles, little sparks, some of them became universes, some of them became galaxies, and some of them became the human souls. When you take us back to what we really are, we are just a tiny spark. We are a tiny spark that started with God. We were sent out and told, go out and experience and learn. Learn everything there is to learn and then bring it back. This is how God learns. He wants to learn. He wants all of us to experience. That's why there is no good, there is no bad. It's only experiences, it's only lessons. We bring them back to the source. And this is how everything was created when it all went out. And as that, if you picture that, when we're journeying out through all of our hundreds and hundreds and thousands of lifetimes, where we experience every type of life you can ever even imagine, we've all been flowers, we've been plants, we've been animals. In the theory of reincarnation, we have to be everything before we're done. We have to know what it's like to be everything on this earth, on other planets, where we are pure energy, it doesn't matter. It's all a form of expression of the source of God. We have to learn everything that's possible to learn. That's why there's no judgment. We have to bring it back to the source. In that way, you can picture us as cells in the body of God, constantly gathering information and taking it back to the beginning. And I asked one time, what does the source do with all of this information once we accumulate it and bring it back? He said it uses it to create more. It's constantly in a state of creation. And everything is created through love. Love is the force behind everything. 
and it uses all of our experiences, all of our knowledge, everything we have gained to create more, to create new universes, to put other forms of life on it. And it goes on and on and on. There is no end. And I said one time, what happens when we get all of the information we've accumulated from hundreds and hundreds of lifetimes back to the source? We can stay there for a while because they say, once you're there, you don't want to leave again. It is so beautiful. It is so wonderful to be all back together again. It's just a, uh, it's a love that you can't describe and you don't want to leave. And I said, what happens then? He said, then, explodes out again, it all starts again. Another journey somewhere else. And somebody asked me one time, well, what happens when you have learned everything that's possible to learn in this universe? Don't you ever stop? Don't you ever just stay there? And he said, no, there's other universes. There's other galaxies. There's other ways of life that you can't even possibly imagine. And we're always adventurers going out and trying to explore and find what's out there. But in that way, we are all God. And that's not sacrilegious to say that. We are all a God because we came from the source and we are a part of it and we will continue to be a part of it. It's a constant motion, it never stops. And when we think of it that way, our little petty problems are nothing compared to what we're really here for. To gain knowledge and information, to help each other, to help each other understand that love is at the basis of everything. Because I let the people heal themselves. But I've had tapes that I played for the class where it's gone step by step how they are cured in one session. And uh, some of them say it's a miracle, it can't happen like that. It can once you realize the power of your mind. You have tremendous power in your mind. We just have Normally, don't I'll think about it anymore. That's why this is one of the abilities that have to be brought back to our time. We can have complete control of our bodies. We can heal our bodies. We can do anything once we understand the power we have. We've just let it lie dormant for too many yeah, thousands of years. It's time to reclaim it now. When we're journeying out through all of our hundreds and hundreds and thousands of lifetimes where we experience every type of life you can ever even imagine. We've all been flowers, we've been plants, we've been animals. In the theory of reincarnation, we have to be everything before we're done. We have to know what it's like to be everything on this earth, on other planets where we are pure energy. It doesn't matter. It's all a form of expression of the source of God. We have to learn everything that's possible to learn. That's why there's no judgment. We have to bring it back to the source. In that way, you can picture us as cells in the body of God, constantly gathering information and taking it back to the beginning. What does the source do with all of this information once we accumulate it and bring it back? that it uses it to create more. It's constantly in a state of creation. And everything is created through love. Love is the force behind everything. And it uses all of our experiences, all of our knowledge, everything we have gained to create more, to create new universes, to put other forms of life on it. And it goes on and on and on. There is no end. What